Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So we are continue with the linear algebra. Today we are going to discuss about the linearly dependent and independent vectors and then we will discuss the basis and the dimension of a vector space. So let us start with that. So today we are starting with the definition of linearly dependence and independence. So suppose I have a n number of vectors and that vector are coming from a vector space Vf. So I am choosing V1, V2, V3 and Vn are the n vectors of a vector space V with the defined over the field F. Then the linear combinations of the vectors, so this is a linear combination I am taking alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 plus alpha 3 V3 up to this is equal to 0 where this alpha i belongs to the field F. So this linear combination we are putting equal to 0 and why we are doing this one? Because we know that 0 lies in the vector space and all these vectors are coming from this vector space. So, 0 is the additive 0 there additive identity so that we are putting equal to 0. Then the vectors I call it V1, V2, Vn so these are the set of vectors are said to be linearly independent if all the fi alpha i's are 0 otherwise they are called linearly dependent. So this is the definition of the linearly dependence or independence of the vectors. So this one we can do. Now so how we can check this one? So let us do this one. So let us start with the some example. So I just take one example. Suppose I take a set S, this is made up of suppose I take 3 vectors 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 2, 3. So these are the 3 vectors I am taking that belongs to V3. So this is the V3 the vector space I am taking. So I know that uh, this is the vector. So generally we also represent the vector like this 1, 0, 0. So basically this is the vector I am representing here. So this is the column vector. So now I take 3 vectors out of V3 and we want to check whether S is linearly independent or linearly dependent. S means the set of vectors, they are linearly independent or dependent. So for this one, what I am going to do is, I just take the linear combination. So I will take, maybe I will define by A 1, 0, 0. And this V3 I know that is defined over the her real line. So field is real. B 1 1 1 C 1 2 3 and that I am taking 0. So 0 means this is the 0 vector belongs to V3. Now these all these vectors. So what I will going to do is that I am going to take the component wise and then putting equal to 0. So from here I will get first component if I choose. So it will be A plus B plus C that is going to be 0. Then I will choose the next component. So in this case B plus 2C that is also coming equal to 0. And then I am taking here. B plus 3C that is equal to 0. So in this case I get this system. So it is a system of linear equation. It is a homogeneous basically 
homogeneous system linear equation and I can write this equation in this form. So, I will get 1 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 2 3. <coughs> so, you can see that I have written this first vector as a column vector here in the matrix, second is here and the third one is here and the, count, the scalar I can write as a, a B C and then it becomes 0 0 0. So, it is you can write as a, a x is equal to 0. So, it is a homogeneous system of linear equation. Now, I want to solve this one. So, we know that how we can solve this. So, I what I can do I can just convert this into the echelon form and then I by using the Gauss elimination. So, what I want to do that now what I do is that I will reduce this one into the upper triangular matrix. So, I will get 1 0 0. So, 1 1 1 2. Now, I have to make this element and this element. So, so basically I just want to make this element 0. So, and this one I can do just multiplying the, so I can here I can write first I write 1 3, then I apply minus of R 2 plus R 3 and from here you can see that I will get 1 1 1 0 1 2 and it is 0 and this is minus 1 and this is 0. So, minus 2 it is 1 okay. and then it became the upper triangular matrix or the echelon form. So, echelon form now I can write this one as, so from here this matrix you can check that the rank of this matrix is 3, it means A is non-singular and if it is a non-singular matrix then I can take the inverse of that one. So, A x equal to 0 can be written as x is equal to A inverse 0 okay. and from here I can write my x as A inverse and that is 0 0 0 and we know that if we multiply anything matrix with the 0. So, it is going to be 0 0 0. So, from here you can say that my A 0, B 0 and C 0. So, all these three scalars are coming 0. So, from here I can say that this vector 1 0 0, 1 1 1 and 1, 2, 3 are linearly independent. So, this way we can define that these vectors are linearly independent. Now, what will happen going to happen if I have another type of vectors? So, this is a just simple vector I have taken. Now, I take another example. So, in this case suppose I have a set vectors 1 1 1 0 3 2 2 1 1 1 3 minus 2 and 1 2 6 minus 5 1 1 2 1. So, this is the 5 vectors I we are taking and you know it is a, so this is a subset of V4 defined on the real line. Why it is V4? Because uh, each com each vector has 4 component and defined on the real line. So, this is belongs to V4. Now, the question is that whether check linearly independent or dependent. 
So, the same way I can just take the linear combination. So, I will just take A 1 the first plus A 2 3 2 2 1 plus A 3 plus A 4 and A 5. So, I am taking 5 element from here and putting that as a linear combination. And as we have done in the previous example, the same way we can find here. So, from here I can write this in the matrix form. So, I can write here 1 1 1 0 and 3 2 2 1 1 1 3 minus 2 1 2 6 minus 5 1 1 2 1. So, this is the 5 vectors we are taken and this is a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 a 5 and that is coming equal to 0. So, you can see that it is a 4 cross 5 matrix, it is 5 cross 1 and it is 4 cross 1. So, this is become A x is equal to 0 homogeneous system. Now, in this case we want to check that whether these vectors are linearly independent or dependent. Now, from the from the theory of matrix and we know that this is the matrix. So, I can 4 cross 5 matrix. So, in this case one thing I know that the rank of the matrix A is always less than equal to minimum of 4 and 5. So, that is 4. So, in this case the rank of the matrix A is always less than equal to 4 because this is 5, 5 cross 1 and the component of each vector is 4. So, from here the rank of A is less than equal to 4. So, from here one thing is true that A is singular matrix. And from here I can say that the system A x equal to 0 is going to have is going to have infinite many solution. So, there will be no unique solution it will be infinite many solution in this case that we need to find if we want to solve that how it is going to happen. But one thing is true that it is going to have infinite many solution and from here straight we can say that that the, the system the vectors are linearly dependent or so, without checking we can just say that it is going to be linear dependent because suppose it has a rank 4 then still it has a rank 4 and we have a matrix 4 cross 5. So, it is going to be a, a singular matrix and then we if we solve this one then we can check that they are going to be linearly dependent. because the number of variables are 5 or the free variables. So, in this case you can also check the number of free variables that will be equal to total number of variable 5 minus whatever the rank of A. So, suppose the rank of A is coming 4 then still 1 will be the free variable and that free variable we have to choose and then we can have infinite many solutions. 
okay so from here you can one thing you can just keep in mind that you have a v4 and suppose you take a 5 vectors or 6 vector out of v4 then it is always going to be linearly dependent so these things we can uh, conclude from this example and later on we will prove also this now after this one i want to discuss one more term is that what is the meaning of collinear or coplanar vectors because just now from there we can check whether it is going to be linearly independent or dependent so like this one so in this case it is a just a vector multiplied by some scalar so it is a type of collinear vector suppose i have some vector x is there and some another vector y is there okay and from here suppose it is my v1 it is v2 and let my v2 is some scalar multiple of v1 so it means both are coming on the same line so from here you can say that these vectors v1 and v2 because from here it can be parallel also because we know that but in the parallel vector also we just shift that one and then it became the type of collinear here so if the two vectors are moving or coming on the same line in this case then they are linearly dependent okay so i am just putting on the same vector so the, so collinear vectors are always linearly dependent another type of vector is coplanar coplanar means if the i take the vectors like this vector so this vector this one this one this one these are lying on the same plane so they are called the coplanar vectors and this is the collinear vectors one vector is in this direction another is coming in this direction so this is a collinear vector it is a of opposite direction but here it is coming in the same direction so they are the collinear vectors so now we talk about two vectors or three vectors then we want to check whether they are going to be a collinear vector or the coplanar vector so this is some results that we can discuss that the set v is linearly dependent if and only if v is zero so in this case i just discuss the first part a1 you have a vector set that contains only one vector okay so in this case it says that so i can take the case 1 s is ld linearly dependent set of vectors okay it means if it is a linearly dependent set of vectors then i can have some alpha v that is equal to 0 for alpha is not equal to 0 so if alpha is not equal to 0 and v in alpha into v is equal to 0 then it is going to happen only when v is 0 so either alpha e should be 0 or v should be 0 so in this case i am taking the alpha need not be 0 so in that case v will be 0 so from here if it is ld then it shows that v is equal to 0 0 element and the case 2 is that if my v is 0 then i take any alpha multiply by v that is always going to 0 okay so from here I can say that it is independent of alpha whatever the alpha I take I, this value is going to be 0 so in this case I can say that v is ld so just one single element is there and if it is a ld only possibility is there when v is equal to 0 so this is okay the second one is that the set of vectors is ld if and only if they are collinear so this b part i can discuss here now it is given that that v1 and v2 are ld so i just take the case 1 
and I assume that that the set V1 and V2 are LD. Now from here if it is LD then I can write that alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 is going to be 0 for alpha 1 and alpha 2 belongs to the real line and it can be any number need not be 0. So, in this case that is true. So, just for the convenience I just assume let us assume that alpha 2 is not 0 because I know that both are never going to be 0 only in one case it can be 0 both the cases 0 v 1 plus 0 v 2 can be equal to 0 no problem. But there if either of them is not 0 then it also is going to be 0 that is the meaning of linear dependent. So, let us assume that alpha 2 is not equal to 0. So, from here I can write this one as so I can write v 2 is minus alpha 1 v 1 divided by alpha 2. So, this one I can write as a alpha 1 alpha 2 v 1 So, this is my v 1. So, from here and this is just a scalar. So, it is a new scalar I just call it alpha. So, I can write it as a alpha v 1. So, from here I can say that v 2 is some scalar multiple of v 1. So, if v 1 is there then v 2 is just the scalar multiple of this one. So, in that case my vectors either it can be suppose this is my v 1 okay, and suppose this is the point. Now, my v 2 can be this it is alpha v 1 or suppose this is my v 1 then I can have a negative of that one. So, it is my v 2. So, this is the form of collinear vectors I am taking here. So, obviously from here I can say that v 1 and v 2 are collinear vectors. And then I just take case 2 that if v 1 and v 2 are collinear then one can be written as scalar multiple or other then one vector can be written as scalar multiple of others because if it is a one vector is this one another vector it is v 1 and another vector is suppose v 2. So, definitely I can write my v 2 as some scalar multiple of v 1. So, this one I can write. So, from here you can say that and then doing the same process from here I can say that v 1 and v 2 are linearly dependent. So, this is the same case we can have. Now, the third one is the set of vectors is linearly dependent if and only if v 1, v 2, v 3 are coplanar. So, this is the coplanar. So, coplanar means like this one. So, all the three vectors are coming in one plane like I take one vector here then another vector here then another vector here. So, both are coming in the same plane. So, that is the called the coplanar vectors. So, in the coplanar vectors So, we know that from the definition of coplanar vectors Now, we know that so I am taking v 2 v 3 v 1 v 2 v 3. 
So, it is given that V 1, V 2 and V 3 are, are coplanar vectors. It means, so this is possible if one vector can be written as linear combination of other vectors because that is only possibility only then we can say that this is coplanar vector. So, implies that let we take V 3 is written as some alpha 1 V 1 plus some alpha 2 V 2 ok for alpha 1 alpha 2 belongs to the, the scalar field whatever we are taking. And from here I can write this as alpha 1 V 1 plus alpha 2 V 2 minus V 3 equal to 0. And from here I can say that this is a linear combination and putting equal to 0, but here the, the coefficient is always minus 1. So, from here I can say that V 1, V 2, V 3 are linearly dependent, because here in this case the coefficient is always 1, minus 1 basically. So, I can choose any value of alpha 1, alpha 2, it can be 0, 0 also, but in this case it is always coming minus 1. So, from here I can say that they are linearly dependent. So, if it, it is a coplanar vector then it can be it is linear dependent and the similarly we can show the other part. that in that case we will assume that this V 1, V 2, V 3 are linearly dependent and from there I can go back like this one and that will show that one vector is a linear combination of the other remaining two. So, it will be coplanar vector. So, in this case the I can say that this vector will be linearly dependent and with the linear dependent then the vector will be coplanar. So, this way we can check now, so after discussing these things, I can also discuss in some other vector spaces that how we can check the linearly dependence or independence of the vectors. So, suppose, so let us take one another example. Suppose I take set of all polynomials. P and I. Okay, so this is all the set of all polynomials of degree less than equal to n. Okay, so I am choosing this one, and I is some interval. Okay, so from here, I just take one set of polynomials that is x square minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. So, this is the my set I am taking here. Now, x belongs to i, i is some interval you can just take some interval a b. So, this one this interval I can take. Now, I just want to check whether this are linearly independent or dependence. So, check linearly independence or dependence of the set of S. Now, in this case also, so let us take linear combination. So, I take the linear combination. So, let us take A x square minus 1 plus b x plus 1 plus c x minus 1 equal to 0. 
So, this is my linear combination of the vectors coming from set of polynomials and then from here I can write I just can separate the power of x square plus. So, the x I can so it can be written as b plus c x. So, the, this is I am just separating the x and then the constant. So, constant I can write minus a plus b minus c equal to 0. Okay, so, this is my quadratic. So, in this case it is a my quadratic equation. And this 0 is a 0 polynomial because I am choosing that from this vector space. So, I know that this is a 0 polynomial. Now, this is true. So, this is true for all x belongs to the interval i and if it is true for all the x belongs to i. So, that it Im implies that 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 the coefficient of both side of the of the equation should be equal because this is going to be true for all x. So, this is possible if I compare the coefficients of x square and x and the constant. So, from here I can say now from here I can say that my a will be 0, b plus c will be 0 and minus a plus b minus c that will be equal to 0. So, I have I taken from here that this is my a 0 I just taken. So, if I put a equal to 0 here then b minus b plus c and b minus c both are coming 0. So, from here you just it is very easy to check that in this case my a will be 0, v will be 0 and c will be 0. So, all this value will be 0. So, from here we can say that that the set of x minus 1, x plus 1, and x minus 1. So, this is a set of vectors is linearly independent. It means that this polynomial or the quadratic I am taking here they are linearly independent to each other by solving this one and this is the value of the scalars. So, let we let me stop here. So, today we have started with the definition of linearly independence or dependence and then we also discussed about the collinear vectors and coplanar vectors and we have studied some example also. So, in the next class we will continue with this one. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks very much. Thank you.